Well, good morning and welcome to our worship service. The service is pre-recorded. It is not a live stream. And currently there are no in-person services at the church. We're so thankful to have recordings of the choir, which were made before the pandemic that we can use in our broadcasts, as well as the virtual choir that sings from time to time. I really wanna uh, extend my appreciation to Tim and all the choir members and to Greg uh, who helped that come about. While the COVID numbers increase in our area, I really want to encourage everyone to stay home as much as they can. And when you do go out to please wear a mask and maintain social distance, it's an act of love that protects ourselves as well as other people. And we hope that you'll join us after the service today for the virtual coffee hour. You just go to trinityzoom.org. It is so convenient and it'll take you directly to the right place. And you can stay right on that site for the Trinity Forum. And today's forum, I'm gonna be discussing some um, Advent symbols and some of the biblical stories behind those symbols. On Wednesday, Valerie Spiller will be leading Bible study and there'll be a Zoom invitation that comes out uh, early this week. And if you're interested in an updated picture directory, please give Arlene a call at the office. She can provide you a directory either in PDF form for your computer or in print. We want to thank those who have pledged for the 2021 um, church drive for our budget. And we also want to just thank those who continually um, support us financially. Could you make sure that you check out the website this week so that you see the updated information that we have and also to check out the Facebook page because we have uh, devotions and readings for each day of the week. We hope that you'll feel free to follow along with the liturgy at home. Say the responses, sing the hymns and include your intercessions with ours. And my friends, the building may be closed, but the body of Christ is still very much alive and functioning. And today we light the first and second candles of the Advent wreath. The first candle was hope, and the candle we light today signifies peace. As Jesus bids farewell to his closest followers in John's gospel, Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? And Jesus answered him, those who love me will keep my word and my father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words and the word that you hear is not mine, for it is God who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. Oh, come the key of David, come and open wide our heavenly home. Make safe the way that leads on high, and close the path to misery. Rejoice, rejoice, shall come to thee, O Israel. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill my promise to my people. Justice and righteousness will fill the land, and all will live in peace and safety. And the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, 
you sent your prophets, your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation. Give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway to our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers. The flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers. The flower fades. But the word of our God shall stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength. O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings, lift it up. Do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read together from Psalm. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. The second reading is from the book of Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, and not wanting any to perish, but all to come in repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these of these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire? But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me, and I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I will baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Ah, uh, we never seem to be able to separate our faith from our actions, can we? That's the central message of John the Baptist. You can't say you believe one thing and then have your action reflect something very different. You might remember an old song of the 60s, The Eve of Destruction by Barry McGuire. It said it really well when he said, you don't believe in war, but what's that gun you're toning? I mean, it's the kind of message from John the Baptist that was causing people to look at their faith and look at their actions and then publicly show their change of heart. There was a Jewish purification ritual that which usually took place in a mikveh, which John the Baptist was then practicing in the Jordan River. It's the Jewish antecedent to Christian baptism. And that's what Mark is telling us about today day as those would come uh, to be baptized by John as a sign of repentance, a public sign that it was their desire to change the direction of their behaviors in life, to bring their life more in line with Torah, truly living out their faith. You see, living out the Torah was how John understood living under the reign of God, even in the midst of this world. 
Now, I don't know about you, but I can relate to those who came to John to be baptized because I've had to repent. I've had to change the trajectory of my life a number of times as I've tried to come more in line with following Jesus into God's kingdom. I've had times in my life where I've been so lost. I followed the wrong paths. I went in the wrong direction. I made decisions that weren't consistent with what I believed about God's kingdom. Just because I fear the pushback from my peers or the society around me. But I'm here to witness this morning to the fact that over and over again, God led me and sometimes God pushed me <laughs> to look in the mirror and see the incongruity of who I was and who I proclaimed or wanted to be. So to come to peace with myself, you see, to come to peace with myself. I didn't have much choice but to repent and shift my direction. And when I did, the grace and mercy of God was there waiting for me. I'm sure God will continue to lead me to become more aware of my defects of character as my life of faith progresses. I'm not there yet, but I'm working on it. And that's the task of Advent, isn't it? You know, my call to ministry and preaching has always been centered on the belief that faith is real for today. And if faith doesn't speak to how we live our lives, then what value does it have? If faith doesn't inform our decisions, then we cannot even consider ourselves serious about being a student and follower of Jesus Christ. We're just really trying to look religious. Now, you no doubt remember the words of our Lord Jesus from Matthew's gospel when he said, blessed are the peacemakers, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Think about that for a minute. The kingdom of God belongs to the peacemakers. Why? Because peace is a hallmark of God's reign. God's reign, God's kingdom, is a reign of justice and love and a kingdom of shalom, a kingdom of peace. Now, the Jewish term for peace, shalom, has a re really rich, uh, rich meaning. It doesn't just mean a lack of fighting and violence. It also means harmony and wholeness and completeness, prosperity, welfare, and tranquility. Shalom really refers to centeredness. It's like a gyroscope that keeps a ship upright, even though the waves are tossing it around. So to be centered in shalom, to be centered in peace, is to be centered in God's reign. It's our gyroscope in the midst of all the waves that hit us and toss us around in this world. In the blessing that I use many times at the end of the service, I quote Philippians 4, when it says the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. You see, the shalom of God, which surpasses human understanding, will guard our hearts and minds. And we need our hearts and minds guarded because it's a challenging thing to follow the Prince of Peace. You know, you might have heard it said before, in fact, maybe I've even said it, you will, in Jesus, you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Well, oftentimes I've heard uh, in Jesus, you will know the truth and the truth will make you odd. <laughs> because when we live in truth, it oftentimes puts us out of step with the society that's around us. In the first 300 years following Jesus' death, Christians were countercultural. They were non-imperial. And that's why imperial Rome considered them such an inside threat. Christians were very odd because they were people of peace, even to the point of becoming martyrs like Jesus had been. Christians in the first 300 years of the church would never consider serving in a Roman army. And to members of the early church, this was just part of living under the reign of God the kingdom of Shalom. And then, of course, this changed in 313 with the Edict of Milan under the Emperor Constantine. 
Christians were given an official status of being tolerated. They were no longer being persecuted by the Roman Empire. And so you see the church beginning to undergo a significant change, a change that we've never, that continues, and we've never really gotten back to those first few centuries. Here's an example. By 400, Christians began to serve in the military to fight the pagans. Just in that short period of time, that's an enormous metamorphosis. By the year 400, you see Christians defending the dominant social order of Rome, which they were dead set against just a few years be, uh, before that. They would defend uh, the social order in regard to money, in regard to authority, and how you should uh, deal with leadership and, and so forth. And in the past 1700 years, the church has really never returned to the way it chose to live out the faith shortly after Jesus' death and resurrection. There have been lots of glimpses of the early church life through lots of reform movements. I mean, think about Francis of Assisi in the 13th century or Martin Luther in the 16th century or Martin Luther King in the 20th century. Those were all efforts to move the church back to its roots of being non-imperial and countercultural that the truth indeed would make you kind of odd. <laughs> now, some of the movements have led groups of Christians to withdraw from society like the Amish or the Mennonites. And there are today people like our presiding Bishop Michael Curry and many who have even uh, marched with Black Lives Matter in that movement who are also trying to have people take a good look at what they believe and what their behaviors are and to see whether, in fact, those attitudes and actions as a Christian then need to be changed. Now, I want you to just imagine for a moment the reign of God, the kingdom of peace. There's no more shouting on the nightly news. <laughs> there's no more accusations. There's no more slurs made against political opponents. There's no more threats to people of color. And those who stand up for justice in the public arena can do so freely. And in today's epistle, the author of Second Peter really sums it up quite well. He says, in accordance with his purpose, we wait for a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness is at home. I love that phrase, <laughs> where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, he writes, while you were waiting for these things, while you were waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace without spot or blemish and regard the patience of the, our Lord as salvation. So the patience of the Lord gives us time to repent, to change, to become serious followers of Jesus and not simply people who are trying to look properly religious. That's what Isaiah is talking about today is there are mountains that need to be made low and valleys that need to be filled up to make a straight road in preparation for the coming of the Lord who ushers in a reign of peace. We're called to make low the mountains that inhibit us and prevent us from welcoming the kingdom of peace in our midst. Now, lots of these mountains seem really immovable in our world. I mean, we have mountains like racism and prejudice and violence and abuse of power. And as we Christians profess our baptismal vow that all people are worthy of respect, even if they're not wealthy or educated or as healthy as others, it's so important to remember that there are still mountains to be made low and it can seem like a really daunting task, but it often, uh, as it often happens to me, I'm always reminded of what Jesus said. What did he say about mountains? If you have the faith, the size of a mustard seed, you will be able to say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move 
and nothing will be impossible. Man, are those words of hope or what? We don't have to move mountains by ourselves, but mountains will never be moved without our participation. That's for sure. That's for sure. I feel it's part of the gospel work at removing the mountain of racism. And I want to tell you why I believe that. A lot of you have probably heard the story before. My first step on trying to do my part of um, standing up against racism is being willing to acknowledge and look at who I am as a person who was raised in a society, my friends were right privilege prevailed. I mean, I was raised in Montgomery, Alabama in the 1960s. There were still water fountains that only whites could drink out of. And there were bathrooms that only white people could use. And when you compare that society I was raised in with the kingdom of God, where all human beings are of equal value and loved by God equally, the, inevitable, the inequities just become painfully obvious. So that was the beginning of my trek to choose to live under the reign of God and to admit that my sin in tolerating a racist, racist society because of my fear of standing up against it. That was the beginning of it. It was the admission that, yeah, I didn't do anything. And then I'm able to turn around and use the opportunities and gifts I have today to start working at trying to chip away at that monstrous mountain. <laughs> the one that's hindered us from living in justice and peace for so long. You know, I really believe there are no little steps and big steps when it comes to faith. There's only the choice as to whether we will take a step in faith or we'll simply ignore it and stay in the same place and not move at all. I thank God, for God's patience, because I need that time so badly <laughs> to do so much repenting turning toward the kingdom of God and living in that kingdom. I haven't gotten there yet, but I'm still working on it. <laughs> I'm working really hard these days. So I pray that we all would have a blessed season of Advent, of trying to tear down some mountains that hinder us from the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ and his Father, who we say is our God. In the name of the living Father, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us all together say the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please join me with the prayers of the people. Almighty and most merciful Father, you have called us to be your people through the grace of Jesus Christ. Fill us with your Holy Spirit and strengthen us on the journey you have set before us 
in this world. This is my prayer. This is our prayer. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness and let your people sing with joy. We pray that you would lead and inspire Michael, our presiding bishop, Dee Dee, our bishop, Glenn, our priest, and all lay ministers of this congregation, that we may work together to meet the spiritual needs of your people. This is my prayer. This is our prayer. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. We pray for those who hold authority in our country, in our state, in our community. This is my prayer. This is our prayer. O Lord, let your way be known upon the earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor taken away. We pray especially for those who suffer from COVID-19 and for those who have asked prayer in our parish. Joanna, John, Peggy, Helen, Jimmy, Joe, Craig, Mary, Peter, Marcia, Danielle, Brenda, Linda, Ida, Anusha, Bill, John, Sharon, Nancy, Suzanne, Patricia, Larry, Betsy, Robert, Andrew and Mary, Virginia, Nancy, Jessica, Peter and Debbie, Joe, and are there others? This is my prayer. This is our prayer. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. We thank you for those who are celebrating birthdays this week. Drew, and are there others? This is my prayer. This is our prayer. Rest eternal, grant to those who have died and become a part of your saints triumphant. We remember Russell Wayne Edwards, who recently died, and Barbara Chafee from the Altar Memorial Fund. Are there others? Sue or Mary. Let light perpetual shine upon them, O Lord, and may their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. This is my prayer. This is our prayer. Lord, you have called us to serve you. Grant that we may walk in your presence, your love in our hearts, your truth in our minds, your strength in our wills. Until at the end of our journey, we know the joy of our homecoming and the welcome of your embrace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant us absolution and remission of all our sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and the consolation of God's Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, our God, you are worthy to receive glory and honor and power because you have created all things and by your will, they were created and have their being.
almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be wholly yours, utterly dedicated to you, and then use us, we pray, to fulfill your purpose, to the glory of your name and the welfare of your people, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Wake me up, Lord, so that the evil of racism finds no home within me. Keep watch over my heart, Lord, and remove from me any barriers to your grace that may oppress and offend my brothers and sisters. Fill my spirit, Lord, so that I may give services of justice and peace. Clear my mind, Lord, and use it for your glory. And finally, remind us, Lord, that you said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Amen. Amen. Almighty and most merciful God, in you we live and move and have our being. We pray today for those in our world who have been impacted by the COVID-19 virus. And we pray that you would surround the sick with a sense of your presence. We pray that you would give strength and peace to those who struggle mentally or financially. And we pray for those who treat individuals infected with COVID-19, that you would keep them safe from contracting the virus themselves. Finally, we ask for the scientists and researchers developing treatments that you would give them wisdom in their task and that their efforts would be productive. All this we ask in the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ, and in the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And now let us pray as our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now a litany of thanksgiving. Let us give thanks to God, our creator, for all his gifts so freely bestowed upon us. For the beauty and wonder of your creation in earth and sky and sea. We thank you, Lord. For all that is gracious in the lives of men and women, revealing the image of Christ. We thank you, Lord. For our daily food and drink, our homes and families, and our friends. We thank you, Lord. For minds to think and hearts to love and hands to serve. We thank you, Lord. For health and strength to work and leisure to rest and play. We thank you, Lord. For the brave and courageous who are patient in suffering and faithful in adversity. We thank you, Lord. For all valiant seekers after truth, liberty, and justice. We thank you, Lord. For the communion of saints in all times and places. We thank you, Lord. Above all, we give you thanks for the great mercies and promises given to us in Jesus Christ, our Lord. To him be praise and glory with you, O Father, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, O God, for you have created all things, and in love you have fashioned the human family in a variety of races, languages, and cultures. Do not let our differences separate us, but help us to welcome gifts we can give and receive from one another. Save us from prejudice, arrogance, and fear, and teach us how to live together as members of one family, sharing one home and the children of one God. And the blessing of God who created us and redeemed us and who gives us life be with us all this day and always. Amen. 
and let us go forth as ambassadors for Jesus Christ, carrying light into the darkness. Thanks be to God.